it's missing a few things that usually a studio has, and then it has some things that other studios don't have, right? So there's no, you know, there's no water, <laughs> and you can't work here 24 hours a day, and there's security guards running all around. But you're also in a museum, which is amazing because you're around art, and you get the advantage of having people walk through and share things, and it's much more of a community experience. But for me, making art, the bigger challenge isn't making art in, like a, in a museum. It's making art in a different city that I'm not used to, in a different culture, with different rules and different ways that you're supposed to go about doing things. I'm using these things only to make the videos, and when I show the videos, nobody will ever see these things. Um, so, for instance, this thing behind me will be a set for an ocean scene. With this character, we're going to cut a whole mbuko in the um, in the tela, the, the, the canvas. And when he moves, it'll seem like the ocean is moving. And then that'll be on a flat screen monitor, um, sumoro with a corniche, with a frame. And then you won't ever see this. We roll it up and we put it away. And so, but for me, it's really important that the objects be made by hand and that they be painted because the relationship is directly connected to painting, even though they're presented as videos. Faccio quattro progetti su monitor, eh? Si dice? And they're going to be framed flat screen monitors. 40 inches, police, così. And um, one of the pieces is going to be a soldier floating in the ocean. The other piece is going to be um, uh, this painting, and it's going to be cut out, and there's going to be glass behind it. And there are going to be two characters. One is going to be painting the glass yellow from inside the painting, and the other one is over there. He's going to be scraping the yellow off to make it white again, and it's a constant loop. Um, the other one is going to be a character, it's based on a collage, there's a gray piece of wood, and you just see a saw coming from the front, and it's gonna cut out the shape, and then reveal this striped character from behind. That's based on a collage. And then the fourth one is, the, the, the set is over there, but it's a picture, a drawing, of my girlfriend, standing on the outside terrace and we've I've made it look like the, her face has been cut out and then we push through the wall and by pushing through the wall we see a window behind her face and then we're gonna hang that piece and that that window is on the other side of this wall across the street and then we hang that on this wall so it looks like you're looking so the video the TV becomes the window like the painting becomes the window that's that idea this is the collage that I made that is going to be on this one. So we'll have the boards over there screwed into here, and then a jigsaw, and then this character with the mask, he'll be behind him with the straight face. So it'll look sort of something like this. This guy, like behind here. One of the things I wanted to do was think about the museum wall and what was right behind the museum wall or inside of the wall. And so that one busts all the way through the wall and you see the outside building. And then these, there's like a character stuck in like a, a minimalist painting cutting his way out, you know? And then these, there's these sort of characters fighting inside of a painting. So I wanted to sort of, and then this one has cut a hole in it. And so I wanted to, um, Play with that space just right behind the painting, right? For me, I used to not use the mask and it was me in the videos, but it, all, it becomes too much about um, me as the artist or my personality or my characteristics. And instead, I want it to be about this thing. Like, who's, who is that versus who am I? And so for me, it's more interesting to untether myself or the people performing inside the mask and just think about visually who this character is. 
It's funny. I thought that I would come here and it would be the contemporary art that was getting made here would be the same as the getting made in Los Angeles and New York, and that somehow because of the internet and the fact that we're all looking at the same images and the fact that art fairs are everywhere, I thought that it would be more homogenous. But there's the work is really different here. I think there's a bit of a a fetishization of um, uh, the beauty of decay and the, and how materials can break apart. And there's a little bit of like a fetishization of like um, I think things feel like they have to be a little old and have to have like a patina to them. Even if it's a faux patina, I just see that a lot in contemporary art. It looks like things have been like just distressed and are like there's a lot of angst in the objects and for me I I like that aesthetic. I mean I can understand it but it's not where I it's not where I come from or no it's not what I'm really interested in. Well in even in Los Angeles, you know, there is that distressed sort of there is that sort of distressed um beauty that people get into but I think that there's a little bit more of a of something pop, like there's a little bit of more like the history of pop art and the history of like commercial art that feeds into and advertising that feeds into the art that I see in Los Angeles and the the lines get blurred between what is design and what is um, what's contemporary art in Los Angeles. But it's all about what you grew up on. I mean, I grew up watching Jim Henson and the Muppets and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's what I make. I mean, I just make sort of low low budget Muppets, you know. And um, and if I had grown up here, I might be making something totally different, you know. For me, it's not just about being funny just to be funny. Like I'm not. I think that it's just it's just part of who I am as a person. So I don't try to fight it. If I tried to make super serious work that was very... That's not me. And it would be... Um, it would be disingenuous to think that I could make work that didn't have humor in it or was really serious. That's not to say that the work doesn't have serious, a serious side to it. But I think on the surface, the thing that can draw you in is levity and lightness and humor. I could be though. And the and then beneath the surface it might be a little bit um creepy or um, a little uncomfortable. Trying to make contemporary art in a in a in an environment with so much historical work is a challenge. And for me I have a lot of um I live in Los Angeles where everything is new and there's and there isn't a lot of there it's not so heavy with this art history. You know, the oldest thing we have is like a hundred years old, you know? And here you look around and everything is five hundred years old, a thousand years old, two thousand years old, and to make something like this seems insignificant. Like how could what what's this gonna do? What does this mean when you're next to the um, the Madonna or the Sistine Chapel or something like that? But to me, I think that it's not for me to judge. It's, I just make what I make as, a, as somebody who exists now. And then later on, maybe in 200 years, somebody can look at that and go, oh, that's so crazy. You know what I mean? Like it's, I can't think about my context and relationship to them. I can just be inspired by what I see and then make it now. I feel responsibility to make work that isn't boring. I feel responsibility when people come in to look at it that it's interesting and compelling and I'm not wasting their time. But that responsibility is also, it's similar to the, it's, all I have to do is make sure that it's interesting for me and usually it'll be interesting for other people. Um, and then I feel like a responsibility to not be pretentious, you know what I mean? Just to make work and be honest when I don't know what it's about or if I'm still trying to figure out what it's about. But I don't feel like some grand responsibility. My job isn't important in, if I didn't exist, it wouldn't change the world, you know? But I think if no artist existed, it would change the world. 
So I'm just one drop of water in a big bucket of artists, right? So yes, all artists have a responsibility, but me as one artist, you shouldn't be bored by my work. That's my responsibility.